There's a new study out of the University of Washington that looked at why more middle of the food chain predators like bobcats and coyotes are moving into human dominated areas. Laura Pru is an associate professor of wildlife ecology at the University of Washington and the lead author of this study. So we are very lucky to have her with us now. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. So I gotta ask you, because I am from originally the so southwestern part of the country in California. Mm -hmm. Coyotes, mm -hmm. very familiar with them. But I think a lot of people I speak with, especially my neighbors, are not. How long have coyotes traditionally been in this area? Well, they originally were more in the middle of the country in the Great Plains area. And then uh, after European settlement and uh, wiping out wolves, mm -hmm. coyotes expanded their range. So they've been here for about 100, 150 years probably. Oh, wow. So they've been here a while, but now they're getting a little more comfortable in our neighborhood. So uh, is that what prompted the study? What did you set out to mm. learn with this study? Yeah. Well. What we were really interested in was how the return of wolves to Washington is affecting other ah, species in the system. Okay. And m these mid-sized predators are so important to our natural ecosystems because mm -hmm. they're right in the middle of the food web. So what they do uh, affects so many other species in the system. And so that was the main focus of the study was trying to understand how these larger carnivores like wolves and cougars affect smaller carnivores like coyotes and bobcats. Wow, all right, so uh, what did, did you find? I mean, it, this is important to know for the ecology standpoint. Yeah. Um, but what did you find? Well, we found that the coyotes and bobcats were quite scared of the <laughs> larger carnivores, which makes sense because they do occasionally get killed by them. Uh, but one thing we weren't sure of was in areas where there's also a lot of human activity, which would the uh, coyotes and bobcats be more scared of, people or large carnivores? Ah. And it turned out they were more scared of the large carnivores uh, and moved towards areas with more people when the c cougars and wolves were around. That is fascinating. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm more scared of a wolf than my neighbor too, so I get it. <laughs> so how did you set up this research? How did you track this? We radio collared all four species, uh, and the collars give off a signal every four hours, so you can tell where they're moving around the landscape. So we could see where the wolves and cougars were moving and where the <laughs> coyotes and bobcats were moving. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, I get distracted. It's hard not to see. Oh, and then so they, they go to the, the the toy or the food, essentially, and then they get trapped. That's how they get the collars on them? So, yeah, for the bobcats, we use these cage traps and put out basically cat toys because <laughs> cats, cats are cats, <laughs> and they're attracted to that. And then uh, we drug them. Uh, radio collar them and then give them a reversal at the end. So they're okay. a little woozy for a couple minutes, but then they wake up and run and off. And they're fine. Yeah. Yep. So uh, when you when you started tracking them, that's when you found that they were moving into more populated areas, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and w that was one difference with this study of previous research had been conducted in mm -hmm. areas like national parks where there aren't human hunting or other activities like that. Mm -hmm. And so we really didn't know how they were gonna react to large carnivores in areas with a lot of people. Got it, oof. Well, I, ha I have to say, you know, you have said earlier in this interview that, that I'm sorry, that, that video of the bobcat waking up is, is <laughs> it's just trying to get out there. Um, you were saying that they found, you found that they were more afraid of the large predators than they were of humans, but I understand they are being killed by humans. Yes. So Either that was, intentionally or unintentionally? That was uh, intentionally, yeah. So that was another one of the main findings that we had was that the coyotes and bobcats shifted towards human impacted areas. Uh, and then when we looked at the causes of death, because that's another piece of information we get from the radio collar, mm -hmm. when the animal dies, it stops moving and we get a mortality alert. It'll actually, it communicates with the satellite and then we get basically an email oh <laughs> saying my gosh. this animal's probably dead. So we go and do a mortality investigation to see what killed it. And it turned out that um, they were 
the coyotes and bobcats were killed by humans much more often than they were by the large carnivores. Wow. Why? Why are people killing these animals? Well, uh, sometimes because they're raiding chicken coops. Okay. Um, but other times for bobcats, they're also trapped for their fur. So they're valuable um, fur bearers. Uh, and for coyotes, just a lot of people don't like coyotes. I don't, you know, and it's so interesting to me because ha having grown up around coyotes, and I don't know if these are more aggressive than the coyotes I grew up around, but I mean, usually if you were like, get, get, they would run. Yeah, yeah. Um, but people I know are afraid for their pets. We've had a lot of signs mm -hmm, up, lost cats. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, they're a lower cha food chain predator, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's a large part of it. Coyotes in in Seattle, they're not going to get shot on site, mm -hmm. but in a rural area. So where we were conducting the study mm -hmm. was in northern Washington, okay. and in in those areas, a lot of times people see coyotes, they just shoot them on site. What are the consequences for that? I mean, this is like you mentioned, this is all part of a very delicate ecosystem. Right, right. Well. In one sense, if for, say, a more sensitive mid-sized predator, like a fisher, mm -hmm. it could potentially be a bad thing. Uh, for species like coyotes and bobcats, actually, it, it sounds bad, like, oh, they're getting pushed into areas with people and then a lot of them are getting killed. But in some sense, this could be return, helping to return things to a little more like they used to be when wolves mm -hmm. originally were here mm -hmm. and keeping the numbers of bobcats and coyotes in check. Interesting, so it all kind of rolls out in the wash. Yeah. Such fascinating research. Thank you so much for spending time with us and, and chatting and sharing this, and I hope to learn more. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.